If you want to earn a college football scholarship or you already have offers but you don't have the level of offers you want, then this video is for you. During this live presentation, I break down the exact five-step system our athletes use where 100% are placed, 83% earn football scholarships, and 42% go Division One. Now, if you don't know who I am, my name is Richie Contratesi. I'm the founder of Next Play, and I specialize in transforming young, driven varsity football players into confident leaders, communicators, and businessmen so they can ultimately secure the best college football scholarships possible. And I make these videos because I understand the struggle firsthand at just five, seven, 150 pounds. I went on to earn and secure a division one football scholarship in the SEC. Now I want to share that journey and lessons I learned with you so you can live your dream as well. Now get out your notepad and let's jump right in. I'm going to walk you through the process that we take. It looks like a bullseye. All right. 50% of your time, first of all, most athletes just DM and email coaches and there's no follow up and it's all over the place. We want to determine what's the best use of your time. Are you efficiently using your time when doing outreach? You don't need to go to camps to get in front of coaches. Think about time real quick. How much time does it take for you to travel to go to a camp to then maybe get in front of a couple coaches to then have to be able to perform at a very high level? to be able to really distinguish yourself, which unless you have really big size or you're really fast or you do something out of the ordinary, then they're not gonna say anything to you anyways. Or you could spend your time doing what I'm sharing with you right now and getting in front of as many coaches as possible and actually getting them to watch your video. If you don't have video, you gotta go to camps, okay? But 20% of your time is gonna be on what we call max schools. So if I looked at your game film or looked at your game film, I would say, you're an NAIA guy, you're a D2 guy. That's like where you should be spending 50% of your time. That's where you're most likely to get an offer. So you've got to look at your film, have coach look at your film, have us look at your film, however you want to do it. 50% of your time spent doing outreach should be spent on schools that you have the best opportunity of getting a scholarship right now, all right? 30% of your time is going to be on what we call push schools. So if you're a D2 guy, 30% of your time should be on FCS schools. If you're an FCS guy, 30% of your time should be on G5 FBS schools. It's one level up. Are you all with me on that? Yeah? I know some of the parents, you might not know what those terms are, but if you look at like division one, you have power five, G5, then you have uh, FCS, then you have D2, and then you have NAI. All right, so it's just one level up. Then percent is on the school that you should be spending most of your time on, which is where you're at right now. 30% are on push schools, which means it's one level up. Excuse me, I went backwards here. And then 20% of your time are, are max schools. So if you're a D2 guy, then 20% of your time should be spent on G5 schools. Okay, Does that makes sense. So let me just make this simple for you. 50%, I'm just gonna say you're D2. Okay, 30%, you're on FCS. 20% you're on G5 and you go up and down from there. And then depending on your goals, you might set, spend a small percentage of your time on power five. If you want like a PWO, like we might say, Hey, there's no way you're going to get a scholarship out of high school, but you may be able to get a, a preferred walk on and then earn a scholarship if that's the route. And then that depends on your goals. Okay. The reason I share this with you in this first step of strategy is so important is because if you don't do this step right first, everything else from here is going to be a giant waste of your time. Okay. So we've really got to know what level you're at and that you're spending your time at the right level. Are you all with me on that? Yes. Okay, good. Two marketing. All right. So how many of you are consistently posting on social media right now? Three to five times a week minimum. Most people are posting for the wrong reasons. How many of you are posting for likes and to go viral and then not posting because you're like, I'm not getting likes. Th this is the myth guys. Like I, the only reason I would post is to get likes. The only reason I would post is to go viral. The only reason I'm not going to post is because my friends are going to be like, why are you posting? No one's liking your stuff and you feel like you look dumb. But we already talked about this. We don't, we're not going to care what anybody else thinks anymore. Yes. 
Okay, so the reason you post consistently is because when you do outreach to college coaches, they need a place to go to look at you so they can get to know you. So when you do get them on the phone, it's really easy to push them to a visit. If they have no idea who you are, they may reach out to your coach, but more than likely they're gonna not gonna have time because they're recruiting 75,000 guys each coach and they're just gonna move to the next guy. So you're posting not for likes, you're not posting to go viral. You're not posting to get a coach's attention. Now, may it happen if you get good at it? Yeah. Will you build a brand? Cause you'll probably get good at it in two to three years. Yes. But right now that's not the purpose of it. So the purpose of it, of posting is so when you do outreach, coaches can go and find, can go and learn about you. So if that's the case, what are some things you should be posting? Highlights. I like it. What else? Trainings. That's it. What else? Yeah, posting all your visits. If you get, obviously if you get offers, if you're having good conversations with coaches, what else? PRs, 100%, yep. Camp invites, the food you guys are eating, what you're doing. You guys know what you should be posting, yes? So why aren't you? This is how you get to the next level. If you took your every practice and every game film that you had and you just cut out every good play, how many plays would you have? Doesn't have to be the best play, but good plays, how many would you have? Let's just use 50 for example. If we were to post three, day, three times a week, how many weeks would those 50 plays give you? 18 weeks, right? Okay, cool. So you have 18 weeks of posts right there. That's not including working out. You go and you do a workout, right? When you go and work out, you have your buddy or your friend, I don't know if coach allows this, but you do it on your own or whatever. Just do one set. And if you work out three times a week and you're doing three different movements, that's nine posts a week. So you add your plays, you add your workouts, you add, all of a sudden you have too many posts. I'm telling you, it's not the tactical stuff. You guys know this. It's not how hard it is to post. But if you're gonna do outreach, which I'm gonna share with you today, if you're gonna do it, coaches are gonna come back and look at your stuff. And if there's nothing there or just a bunch of retweets that mean nothing, and they don't have time to like reach out to your coach and talk to them, they're on to the next guy. Does that make sense? You're all with me? So one, we have to have a really good strategy. Two, we gotta be able to market ourselves and you gotta post consistently. You can't not post. And then three, this is the big one. This is, there's a sales process. I'm gonna walk you guys through this, all right? The first step of the process when you're reaching out to coaches is to determine who the area coach is. It's not a pitch. You don't just send your height, your weight, all this information about you, your NCSA profile, your YouTube, your huddle profile, your X account, how amazing you are, how this, you don't email that to coaches. How many of you parents by a show of hands enjoy when someone knocks on your door and they already got some pitch ready for you? <laughs> you guys got it? But, but this is what we teach athletes to do with head, with coaches. Why? I know you guys don't have sales experience, but listen, never pitch anybody unless they're ready to be pitched. Also, you have no idea who you're pitching. You're just sending this to the position coach. Is he recruiting your area? Probably not. So the first step is we got to determine when we're doing outreach, whether it's DM, whether it's email, it doesn't matter. We got to first ask who's the area coach from my particular area. And a lot of people ask, what's an area coach? So every school, all their position coaches are responsible for recruiting an area, right? So they don't recruit by position, they recruit by areas. So you reach out to all the coach. So who's the area coach? You gotta ask. Name a school on your list. Cal Poly? Perfect. When you reach out to Cal Poly, you're gonna reach out to every single coach on their website and ask who's the area coach for Southern Utah until you find out on every school of your list. That's the first step. That's why you can do this as a 27. You, you email, you call, you DM. How many of you have a LinkedIn account? Not many, or not parents, but <laughs> kids. Guys, finding out who the area coach is purely effort. We had a guy, his name is Matteo Buni, okay? No scholarship offers when we met him, zero. This kid literally created his 50 to 60 schools and instead of emailing and DMing, he didn't wanna do that. He called every single school, every single coach that we could find the phone number for, every single one. And within six months had three offers. He didn't want to do the emails. He didn't want to do the DMs. He was just straight to the phone call. So it doesn't matter how you do it, but what matters is that you do it. And so what we have our athletes do is all of them call, email, DM, LinkedIn, Twitter or X, uh, voicemails, every way. 
you reach out to them. The reason that most athletes don't reach out is because they don't know what to say, right? Like, what do I say when I get the coach on the phone? Well, what's the goal? My goal is to find out who the area coach is. That's it. I don't need to pitch them. I don't need to do anything. I just need to find out who this area coach is. Once I find out who the area coach is, then my only goal is to get that coach to watch your video. That's it. You're not trying to pitch an offer. You're not trying to get a visit. You're not, you're just like, I just want to get this coach to watch my video because he recruits my area. Once they've watched your video, the next step is to get them on a phone call. All I got to do is get this coach on a phone call if they've watched this video. Once you get on a phone call, then you're going to close on a visit. Then once you're on your visit, you're going to close on your offer. Now you might skip a step, you might skip the visit, but this is the sales process. All right. So when you're communicating with coaches, ah, I just want to find out who the area coach is. I just want to get them to watch my video. And you guys might get a lot of camp invites and stuff like that. And that's fine. The coaches are trying to do that to throw you off. But all you need to do is ask this coach, okay, I'd love to go to your camp, but are you available for a quick phone call so that I can learn more and make sure the camp is the right fit for me and that it's not going to be a waste of your time and my time. And then if the coach is willing to conversate with you about it, then you consider going to the camp. If they don't, then why would you go? I know a lot of people that go to a lot of camps and get nothing out of it and spend a lot of money doing it. I, I know I'm going a little deep here in some of this, but I just want you guys to really understand like the actual process and what it takes, all right? So marketing, sales, the fourth step is negotiation. How many of you, by a show of hands, knew that you could negotiate your offers? No? So unless you're going Power 5 or G5, more than likely you're gonna get offered partial scholarships. And with partials, they're fully negotiable. So I'll give you an example. We had an athlete, his name's Cooper King, and he's out of uh, Arizona, and he got a Division II offer, but it was partial, it was half. And so I worked with Cooper's mom and we negotiated with a coach back and forth and back and forth, back and forth for about a week, got him an extra $10,000 and turned it into basically almost a full ride from negotiating. So just because you get an offer doesn't mean you're done. You can negotiate these offers. It's not just you get an offer and you're done. That makes sense. Are you all with me on this? So one, you got to have the right schools that you're filling into your funnel right? The right 50 schools. You're going to market yourself so that when you reach out, they have somewhere to go and look for you. You find out who the area coach is. You get them to watch your video, get them on a call. You get them to offer you a visit. You get them to offer you an offer. And then the fifth step is you close, all right? You close the offer. You close. Most athletes don't close. Why? Because they won't ask the tough questions all the time. Hey, so you left the visit and you didn't have an offer. Why? I don't know. You don't know, but what did you ask them? Are they going to offer you? Well, I didn't feel comfortable. No, you got to ask. It's the toughest questions to ask are, Hey coach, it's been a great visit. Are you going to extend me an offer? Cause the coach may be like on the fence about giving you an offer, but he wants to see what someone else is going to do. Are they going to commit to this other school and should we offer him and should we not? And so if they could push it off, they're going to. And coaches are the ultimate salespeople, ultimate salespeople, right? Coach in the back. I mean, they are the best and they will sell you on every single reason they will not offer you and why they have to talk to this person and why they have to do this and why they have to do this. You know, Grant Cartone said this. I thought it was funny. He said, you're either going to sell the coach on giving you an offer or he's going to sell you on a reason he can't. Either way, a sale's taking place. Now, is it going to work? Are you going to get an offer every time? No, but you might have a school on your list that you keep pounding and keep working and keep working and the coaches are never going to offer you. So we ask the tough questions, we get a yes or a no, and we move on. And here's the thing. A lot of times coaches will say, I'm not going to offer you right now. And then you have the ability to say, what do I need to do to get an offer? And they'll tell you, I need to do this, 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 and this. And now you know what you need to do. Otherwise you walk out and we're like, wait, did you ask? No, I didn't ask. I don't know. Uh-uh. Yes or no's. And we're moving forward.